Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video I will be discussing about dialysis. One of the most important topic with respect to your NEET exam as well as for NCRT. When I talk about dialysis, you need to understand dialysis is also known as hemodialysis or even it is called as artificial kidney. It means it plays the role of kidney when your actual kidney fails. Dialysis is also called as dialysis, which means dissolution. When I talk about dialysis, friends, dia or dis means through and lucis means loosening. So first what happens, your blood will be loosened up completely so that they can be easily allowed to flow out of your body. Now here, this dialysis is done. When the patient is suffering from AKI that is acute kidney injury or CKD that is chronic kidney disease which is at this stage 5. It means your kidney has totally stopped working and that's why the patient is subjected to dialysis. The dialysis helps in two ways. First of all the dialysis helps in removal of the waste. All the nitrogenous waste will be removed by the help of dialysis machine. Send. Second, it helps in ultrafiltration. But students, dialysis is not a permanent solution for kidney failure. Please make it clear in your mind because dialysis helps in removal of all nitrogenous waste. It nowhere solves the purpose of hormones because your kidney apart from forming urine, it helps in endocrine function also it has a great endocrine role to play your kidney acts as a gland it produces two hormones like erythropoietin and calcitriol what is the role of erythropoietin so i can say as the word says erythro it means rbc's and poietin means formation so the trigger the chemical trigger that is required by the bone marrow is provided by the erythropoietin. It helps in RBC production, whereas the calcitriol helps in the regulation of calcium ion. So, in it helps in bone formation. Now, let us assume this is one hypothetical bed, and a patient will be lying on the bed. See what we need to understand first. Since the kidney of the patient has failed, and if the patient is suffering from diabetes and all the viscosity or the thickness of the blood in the patient's body will be very much high. So what we do, we provide vibrations to the patient's body. His entire body will come in vibrating mode. Why it is done? It is done just to loosen the blood if it is blocked anywhere or if it has coagulated. And this vibration will provide great mobility to the blood and as a result, the patient now can be subjected to dialysis. Here I will be taking just the hand of the patient. So we need to understand here that there are two important things. One is radial artery that I have mentioned in red and other important part is radial vein. Now this radial artery and radial vein is very much important for dialysis because blood will be sucked with the help of radial artery and it will be introduced back in the body via the radial vein. So what we need to do? Let us draw one machine that is dialysis machine. Now this machine will clear all your concepts related to dialysis. So now this machine is having a chamber. So this chamber I can call it as dialyzing chamber. Dialyzing chamber means a chamber in which dialysis is going to take place. Now apart from this inside the dialyzing chamber what will be present is a membrane a very special selectively or even I can say semi permeable membrane. Now this membrane is permeable to all nitrogenous waste ions and salts. So when the blood will pass through this membrane what will happen all the nitrogenous waste will be absorbed or transferred through this dialyzing membrane and needed ions and salt will be added in the blood. So this is the most important role of dialyzing membrane which is a semi permeable membrane. Now 
when we talk about this dialyzing chamber it has two things the outlet and the inlet because inside this chamber what will be present there will be fluid present so the dialyzing fluid will be introduced through the inlet and it will be removed via the outlet and remember students inlet is downward and outlet is upward so here the dialyzing fluid will enter under pressure in the dialyzing chamber and this what i am drawing is the dialyzing fluid this dialyzing fluid consists of lots of ions salts and it transfers those salt inside the dialyzing membrane and it takes all the nitrogenous waste like urea uric acid from the blood and once the dialyzing fluid has been sufficient enough you can say dirty then it is removed through the outlet here what i'm drawing is anticoagulant chamber a chamber where anticoagulant will be added because we all know that as our blood comes in contact with air it is going to coagulate it will dry so we don't want this to happen so what we do we make a chamber where anticoagulants will be added and the other circle is for maintaining the pressure of the blood so here is the anticoagulant chamber the anticoagulant can be heparin because heparin is going to prevent the clotting of the blood and this is the pressure gauze the next one this is the pressure gauze where the pressure of the blood will be maintained so this is considered as anticoagulant chamber and this is also anticoagulant chamber because from radial artery we will bring the blood by adding anticoagulant and when it is transferred back in the body again anticoagulant need to be added what is this the machine or the device you can say which is going to measure the pressure of the blood because the pressure of the blood that is there in your body has to be maintained constant if there is increase or decrease in the pressure of your blood in the body it will result in great problem so this machine helps in maintaining or regulating before starting with the dialysis doctor makes a cut between the arteries and the veins it adds a graft and after that it is joined to form a fistula now this graft is inserted as you can see radial artery and radial vein with the av fistula and the needle and finally the blood is sucked by the radial artery and it is traveling in the machine it is going in the dialyzing machine and once it travels in the dialyzing machine the first the pressure gauze will maintain the pressure then anticoagulant is added and then when the blood travels through the dialyzing membrane all the nitrogenous waste will be removed and essential ions and salts will be added the nitrogenous waste can be ammonia it can be urea it can be uric acid all this will be used and it will be removed from the blood and essential ions will be added and once the process is done the blood passes downwards and through the inlet dialyzing fluid will be added and if the fluid contains more amount of nitrogenous waste and less salt what happens the excess dialyzing fluid is drained from the outlet now now once the dialyzing fluid is drained out new fluid will be added now the blood is going to travel through the anticoagulant and pressure gauze but remember student if there is any air bubble in the blood those air bubbles are removed before passing through the anticoagulant and now the blood travels via the radial vein back into the body now this is how the dialyzing takes place now this dialysis will be continued till the patient finds a donor because dialysis is not a permanent solution for kidney failure there is one more type of dialysis student that is called as peritoneal dialysis now it is very easy method in which the patient can get dialysis done at home only so here what happens the dialyzing fluid is introduced in the peritoneal chamber or you can say in the abdominal cavity now this peritoneal cavity 
or the peritoneal membrane is going to act as a semi permeable membrane that will drain all the nitrogenous waste into the dialyzing fluid and by the suction it is sucked it is done at home very easily but here the cut is made in the abdominal this is the peritoneal chamber now the doctor makes a cut in the lower abdominal area and in this chamber the dialyzing fluid will be added once the dialyzing fluid is added the peritoneal membrane removes all the nitrogenous waste adds the essential salt and the waste or used dialyzing fluid is sucked this is how peritoneal dialysis is done hope students you would have understood the concept of dialysis in easy way and if you have understood don't forget to give a like to the video your like motivates me to make more such videos for you thank you very much this is sunil sir saying goodbye to you stay blessed